Very often, I see a lot of core players, safe lane, mid or off lane, completely making the mistake of not playing their hero for what they're meant to be. Right, of course Dota is a very diverse game where you can change things up. You can play Spectre as a position 5 if you're crazy enough. But usually, when you pick certain heroes that have a certain playstyle, and if your teammates pick a certain hero that has a certain playstyle, you should pick around that. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to identify what your hero does and what you should be doing with specific heroes, and how to draft around your teammates when you see they either pick a roaming core, a fighting core, or greedy cores, how can you balance it out? This pro guide you're about to see is one of hundreds, just like it, over at GameLeap.com. GameLeap is your number one stop to become a specialist in your desired role fast. Check us out today with the discount link in the description below to unlock your hidden potential, but for now, let's hop into the video. So the main core tenants we have in this video is that there's two, mainly two different categories of cores, right? These two are farming cores, and fighting cores. And now of course you can find a lot of heroes that are in between, but I'm going to make it very simple so you guys don't overthink this. Don't overthink it. In fact, in order to gain MMR, I have to convince a lot of people not to overthink their playstyle. So I'm going to give you some basic thinking so that you can win your games. So the first thing we're going to be going over is the safe laner list, right? I'm going to be going from safe lane to mid to off lane and giving these two categories. And then you can kind of combine them and be like, oh, okay. So if I see a farming hero in the safe laners, maybe I'll pick a fighting in the mid laners. And the last thing I want to say before getting into that is that the typical setup that I would recommend for pubs is having two farming heroes and one fighting. Now this might seem a little bit crazy. What if I have a Medusa mid and an Alk safe lane? That's not going to work speed. Yes, I agree. And you kind of want to make that judgment call. Maybe it's too greedy. So you can balance it out. Even like a 1-1-1 one, one, one of one hard farmer, one middle ground, and one fighter. And of course you can change this up. This is why we love Dota. You can do basically anything. You could have three hard carries and win. But I'm going to give you a basis for what I think works. So let's get into the safe laners. First off is the fighting safe laners. Right? These are heroes that typically you'll see that want to run around, they can make space by hitting enemy heroes, and don't necessarily need to rice in the jungle all the game. Right? So you want to pick these heroes if you have an aggressive playstyle and like fighting. And these heroes are Bloodseeker, Juggernaut, Faceless Void, Gyrocopter, and Slark. Now a hero like Slark would need a good laning matchup, because if Slark does not have a good laning matchup, then he probably can't fight. He'll have to spend a lot of time strictly pushing in waves to make a comeback into the game. But a lot of these other heroes like Gyro, Void, Jug, and Bloodseeker, as long as they have their spells up, like Jug's Spin, Bloodseeker's Rupture, Void's Chronosphere, and Gyro's Rocket Brush, they have no problem taking early game engagements and completely dominate them right it's not it's not even close to a lot of heroes right if they met up on a hero like tb right gyro is going to shred him in the early game same thing for juggernaut and that's kind of the comparison so if you notice yourself you're a player who likes to fight at the 10 15 20 minute marks these are the type of heroes you should be looking for the five i just listed now on the other half we have terrorblade pa specter alk and wraith king now i'm not listing every hero Right, I'm giving you a general five so you can understand the concept. These heroes do not overthink it. Just don't overthink it and go for timings, right? So if you're a Terrorblade, what would a timing be? Not necessarily one item like Manta. It might be Manta plus Scotty or Manta plus BKB. And if you can go into the game and be like, yes, TB is a farming core. He's not a fighting core, a farming core. And make your game very simple. You can get to Divine strictly through farming. That is it. In fact, you could get to Immortal if you're good enough at it, and I'm not kidding, of strictly farming and hitting your timings. The best carry players in the world know their timings and spike at them, right? So what I recommend you do if you pick a hero like TB, get your Manta Scotty, and then say, team, let's go smoke. Or if you're a PA, get your Deso plus BKB, right? Don't do things before that. It's so risky. You lose one fight, you get set behind, and unlike a Gyro or Void, where if they die once, they're still going to be able to fight and take the next engagement, and odds are they'll even win the next engagement. And then for the rest of the heroes, I could go on and on about Spectre, Alk, and Wraith King, but right, they simply have abilities to amplify farm, right? Spectre doesn't necessarily, but he doesn't fight that well too early, but he does pop in and out for kills. So of course, this is understanding your hero. And once again, yes, can the hero fight? Of course they can fight. Al can hit his Radiance and go. Spectre can have Haunt and go. PA can just have Treads and make a play. But is it reliable and should you do that to gain MMR? No. Stop overthinking it. Please, listen to me. Listen to me. Don't overthink it and hit 
creeps. Just go from camp to the next camp. If you farm a wave, look at the next camp you're gonna farm. Pay attention to the minimap. Do all these little things and carry the game. And now let's move on to mid laners. So a couple of fighting mid laners we have here is Leshrac, Lina, Ember, DP, and DK. Now if you watched yesterday's video, you saw my live game of Lina, and you will know that you can farm a lot on Lina, right? You can. Same thing for Leshrac, Ember, even DP and DK. You can scale in these heroes, and, and that's the beauty of Dota, especially after all the talent changes and, and such, you have the ability to scale. However, if you see that you have a hero like TB, PA, Spectre, Alka, Wraith King, one of those, then you might want to consider picking one of these mid laners, the Lesh, the Lina, the Ember, the DP, or the DK, right? Because you can apply early game pressure, right? They kind of mix well together because while they're AFK farming, you're going to hit a spike around the 15 minute mark on a lot of these heroes or even earlier if you're coming out of a good laning stage. And as a result, you can run around, fight, create space, have fun, while, while your farming cores completely do whatever they want. And now on the other half of mid, we have a hero like SF, Storm Spirit, Dusa, Broodmother, and Arc Warden. All of these heroes need to hit timings, right? And I see people commonly make the mistake, especially on Storm Spirit, of just running around engagement after engagement. They run out of mana, they can't farm, and typically that's actually one of the main issues with Storm. You actually do want to look for early game kind of pickoffs, but it's hard. It's hard. And people go all in on fighting. Same thing for SF, they go all in on fighting. Even Arc Warden, they'll use their clone just to show up to engagements. And the big thing here is, is it okay sometimes? Of course, of course. But for the majority of the game, and why I think you can literally 100% commit to farming on these heroes, is because that is what they do best. They like hitting timings a little bit later on when they either get their BKB on SF, Dragonlance plus Manta plus Scotty on Dusa, something of that sort. Brood can get her Ags plus level 20 talent. Arc Warden being the late game dominator that he is, level 25 even, is a crazy spike in the hero. And that's what you have to understand, right? So if you see one of these heroes on your team, maybe then for the safe leaner category, you can pick a Bloodseeker, right? You could pick that Jug so Jug can run around with his healing ward and even back you up in the later mid-game engagements with his healing ward. Void can follow up as a great Chronosphere setup for a hero like Dusa, but fight in the early game so she can take the farm. It's a really nice balance, and if you consider these things, not only will it help you in solo queue, but hopefully in party queue as well. And finally, let's get into the offlaners. So for offlaners, I think it gets a bit weird, right? Because most offlaners have the capability of fighting early. It's something they're very good at. Once they hit their level three and level five spikes, they often can dominate a lot of the safe laners that we've talked about. And so I'm gonna do my best to give you a couple examples of what you see in pubs and what isn't necessarily the typical offlaner, but what is common in a public match. <laughs> So for offlaners, a big one I see is Timbersaw. This is a very greedy offlaner, and what often ends up happening is if they don't do well in lane, they need to catch back up, right? And as a result, if you have a Spectre and a Timber jungling, it's a disaster. Now, of course, Timber can play on the aggressive, so it might not end up being an issue. After that, we have Necro. Necro is a hero that can dominate lane and farm. However, you have to be careful, and I know this is where you can kind of debate me on these type of things, and I think it is literally proper to debate something like this. Necro can be a fighting hero. He can go for that early wand, mech, bracers, phase boots, atos, run around, and make plays. However, he's not much of a roamer, right? He doesn't have any stuns or a proper early game stun or catch. Same thing with Timbersaw. Yes, he can make space. We saw in the finals, literally the last game of TI, they had a gyro mid and IO safe lane and a timber off lane, right? Why was that okay? Because Timber's usually a greedy hero. Because a Timber could play aggressive. You notice he made plays for the mid tower. He had a good game. He had a good laning stage. And as a result, he could catapult that forward and not be considered a greedy hero. So of course, all these little things matter in Dota. But moving on to even more greedy ones, and ones I will definitely say try to pick the fighting course with, is a hero like Mirana. This is one that used to be more popular and still picked every so often. Right, Mirana is a hero that naturally likes to either get to her Ags or build a lot of right click items. She can fight, of course, once again, it is pretty insane what she can do in the early game with the right setup. And then we have a hero like Monkey King, right? This is actually pretty common. And in fact, the last one I'm going to say after Monkey King is something uh, I'm even more interested in in talking about. But if you see a Monkey King, you know this guy has the full intention of playing carry from the offlane role, right? And that's the reality. In fact, the last point I was going to make is any safe laner in the offlane role. People pick safe laners. I've seen Slark offlane. I've seen PA offlane. I've seen it all offlane. 
right? Especially when I'm coaching these lower bar games, you see it all and you have to adapt. You have to adapt. If you do not adapt to your situation, how in the world do you expect to win? People constantly are like, yeah, well, my teammate picked this greedy and that greedy. But if you saw it, like, like if you know what happened, if you know what's coming and you see them pick it and you pick the specter when you already have a PA, what do you expect to happen? You have to adjust. And that's why I'm saying if your off laner picks any sort of safe laner, switch it up. Go for either a less greedy, right? A less greedy safe laner. Or you can even go for a Timber or a Necro, one of the in-betweens that I kind of mentioned with these offlaners, an in-between offlaner. And finally, let's move on to more of the space creation offlaners that work very well with the greedy cores. The first notable one was a dominant hero in TI9 and did get nerfed in this recent patch. However, Enchantress is still extremely good at winning lane, right? Generally good. You still win most lanes, you're going to do fine. And can fight, fight, fight push in lanes, fight, fight, fight. And this is great for all the jungle heroes like the Wraith King, Alk, and Spectre. They love having an Enchantress on their team because she sieges towers and creates map pressure. Same thing for Omni Knight. In fact, he is amazing with a lot of the hard carry cores that you'll see. Having a PA with Heavenly Grace is one of the deadliest combos in the game. It's very hard to stop in mid-game teamfights when you can't even stun a hero that is creating you for a thousand damage. Moving on from there, we have a hero like Brewmaster. Brewmaster's level 6 spike is one of the most dominant in the game, however he does have a meh laning stage. But if you know you can get away with it, or you're paired with a hero like Lion against one of the weaker safe laners, you're going to have a good start, and as a result you can transition into this mid game fighter that actually can kind of scale. Right, going Radiance on Brew allows you to scale, but if you go something like a Vlad's into a Crimson or a Blink Dagger plus your face boots, you're going to be able to make space and create a very strong timing at the 30 minute mark with the hard carries. Next up we have Centaur, he's a general lane dominator that is very good with these hyper carries because you can help them escape. Even if you don't want to rotate and create space for them in their particular lane, if they get ganked, you can stampede them out, right? You don't even have to make plays by them. In fact, that's the great thing about Centaur, you can split push hard, or you have so many good options. You can crush your lane, you can continue fighting because, you know, your retaliate is one of the strongest spells in the early game, or you can just split push and take towers if things are not going too well. I really love heroes with options. I think it's one of the better ways to actually play solo queue, keep your options open, and therefore, I really like Centaur in that regard. And finally, we have a hero like Tiny. Now, of course, Tiny can be a safe laner or even a mid laner to some extent. He was very popular mid at TI, but as an off laner, he can make a lot of space, right? If you max your avalanche and your toss, you can run around and make plays. In fact, I even mentioned this where S4 played an offlane tiny uh, for EG and he actually maxed out his tree grab when they had an AM. And I felt like that was maybe not the best idea, but you have to understand where is he coming from? Why would he do something like that? Because he wants to put tower pressure. One of the best ways to make space for AM is to actually put tower pressure on the opposite sides of the map so that the enemy team has to respond. But unfortunately, OG was way too good at responding to it and didn't overreact, punishing his skill build. And that's all I have to say for this video. So really what I wanna recap briefly is if you're playing a greedy core, make your game simple. Only hit creeps until you have your item spike. And if you don't know what your item spike is, watch a pro replay. Go to dota2protracker.com, look up a pro replay, watch their hero and see, oh, when did they win their fight, right? When did they fight the most? And just copy exactly what they do. Copying is one of the best tools in Dota. In fact, I even want to make a full video on it sometimes. The ability to copy gains MMR. There's too many players who think they have to create their own meta and you know, reinvent Dota. Just do what the pros do and you're going to have a lot of success. So hopefully you take this to heart, maybe draft around what I've been telling you in this video and best of luck. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now right now to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount guys 25% and start your journey today